I have always enjoyed making things solo, mostly because I want to learn kind of every aspect of game development and just anything that I put my mind to. Some people enjoy focusing on a specific thing, modeling, texturing, just blueprints in Unreal, something else. Always enjoyed the entire process and kind of learning at least to a good degree every single step. Because of this, I've always enjoyed doing solo projects, which is why, as you saw recently on the channel, I have done a solo game jam. And it was my first one in over half a decade. Now, I actually really enjoyed the process of this, and I want to kind of continue learning and improving on some things. So I want to show you guys today some of the cool things that I've been trying out and kind of going out of my own comfort zone to implement and how I've done that and kind of give you a general idea of my process in this uh, devlog. Now, I'm not going to go into details on how to do the step by step on any part of this. I'm going to give you a general idea, but if you would like a step by step tutorial on anything that I'm going to show you guys, please let me know in the comments below. So this was my old menu and nothing has changed here. This is all the same as before. But when I started, I'm no longer my regular 2D character. I'm now Manny. Now, this is the Unreal Mannequin, but as you can see, he has lost a few polygons. He is now completely two-dimensional. And while being two-dimensional, he is still moving in eight directions. So I've implemented eight directional movement on a 2D sprite, and this uh, continues into combat. So I can have combat in eight directions. And there's a full combo system, so he's able to knock things up into the air, and then once he's in the air, you can knock them down. So, so if I come here and I execute my combo, assuming that they don't die. There you go. He's knocked up. And then when he finishes his combo, he goes down with them. Now, if I knock this guy up and I don't execute anything, now we will act eventually hit down. But if, as you saw, if we're hit while in the air, it kind of lags us for a moment. So... That is what keeps us up. So effectively, I have a slight juggle there. Now, I have done this to Manny, but I've also done this to someone else. Over here, you might see, notice another character that, you know, while being pixelated, might look a little familiar. And for those of you that remember, I made another devlog a while back that used him, actually. This is the same skeleton from Paragon that you can get yourself for free right now but I have gone ahead and pixelated him and made him a 2D sprite. And just like my main character, he also has full a-directional movement and I can go into him and knock him up in the air, knock him down. He has three different attacks animations, as you see, and he'll play a random one currently depending on which one he wants to do. Of course, all of this is entirely randomized and another thing you might notice is when I'm far away from the from them, I actually go ahead and just teleport to them effectively. Now, this is just to get the combat snap here. And this is something that I just didn't like originally in my kind of my game design is I wanted the combat to be feel much snappier. So now it goes into whatever direction you're facing. And as long as there's an enemy there, you'll teleport there and you get the kind of the movement effect that kind of makes it feel like there's actual movement and the camera lags slightly behind. Now, the actual juggling is actually really simple to do. The first thing is I stop my character's movement wherever he is. I disable gravity, so that's why they float. And then after 0.2 seconds, I set the gravity back to being low, so they gradually go down. But of course, if there's no attacks, if there's no juggling happening, there's a reset gravity that has another retriggable delay after half a second that resets the gravity. Now, in my case, I'm using 3.0 gravity to make the kind of the jumping feel a little snappier. But normally, by default, this is one. So it's a very simple setup to have effectively a juggling effect once you have uh, done this. And to launch him up, I just knock him airborne. I'm using gameplay tags in my case. And quick note, if you're ever using a launch character and it's on the ground, I suggest for a brief moment turning ground friction to zero and then back to eight immediately after. Because even if you override this, the friction actually will affect the launching, the pushing of that character. Now, there's other ways to do it, but if you want to use a launch character, this is just something to keep in mind when you do this. 
And then effectively, it launches them in the air and then sets the gravity of point one, where you can then juggle again. Again, if you'd like an actual step-by-step -step tutorial on all of this, I'll happily set it up for you. This one is my own design. Just let me know in the comments. And if you guys are enjoying this devlog so far, I would love it if you hit the like button. And if you're new, consider subscribing for more awesome devlogs like this. So back to it. And as for how I did this, well, it's actually relatively simple. And here I am in our previous project. This is the previous kind of test game that I was making. The only reason I dropped this one was because my computer couldn't handle it. I just got my new PC, so it's possible I'll, I'll pick it up. But I really like the new idea that I had. And the 2.5D is a little bit easier for me to accomplish. And the project scale is a little bit better. This was more of kind of a test run, first character, first time doing animations, first time doing a lot of this stuff. It was a good learning experience. But this is the character here. This is our skeleton. This is what we brought over. And to bring them over is, and pixelize them is relatively straightforward. What I do is I go into the actual animations that I want to grab. Let's say I want to grab his light attack. Well, you can take the animation sequence and you just bring it out. Here it is. Here's the light animation. And if I was to simulate, here he is actually attacking with his light attack. All I do is put him at origin. So that way he is at the correct location. And then you can go to file export selected. Here, if you do GLTF, this actually outputs a file Blender can read that also brings the textures with them. So you just save this wherever you would like. And once you do that and you bring it into Blender and reassign the materials, you kind of get the character, well, all here. In this case, I have kept his uh, back wheel. And you know, it's still, since this is just a test mostly, I haven't even put opacity on here. But you can see he's wonking. And what I can do now is if I render, you can see it's a very small render. If we just zoom in, you can see this is our pixelated render and it has a slight outline on it. And if I go to a different frame, right, here's the full frame. And what I can now do is by rotating the camera around him, let's say to 90 degrees, I can now render a side view. So effectively, I go in, I render out eight directional views of the same animations and it's looping animations and it's make sure that he's always in place. We don't want a root animation here. And once I have that, once I have what I want, what I can do is I can take all of these images and I can rename them. So by default, they're not going to be in order like this. I have to rename them. So what I do is I use Microsoft Power Tools since I'm in a Windows. And if you don't know about Microsoft Power Tools, I highly suggest you look into them. They're super powerful. And one of the features is the batch rename option. So I can right click on this and just go to rename with power rename. And here you can see, here's all the files that I have. And what I can do is I can just get all of them by doing period star. And I use regular expression so it knows what this is. And then I can just replace it with anything. So for example, skeleton running. And now you can see it's gonna rename everything to skeleton running. But we don't want, of course, skeleton running. That's we'll remove the extensions, remove the file names. We just add an underscore dollar sign and then braces. And then you see you, you get your order of numbers. And then of course we need the extension. So in this case, I'm gonna keep the same extension dot PNG. We don't wanna start at zero in my case. I just wanna start at one. And so you just type in start equals one. And you can see there starting to at one. And if we want to, we can start it at 10. We can start at 15. We can do any number we want. And let's say we wanna start at 15, but we also wanna increment it by every two. So now it's going to be 15, 17, 19. So now you're going to get all odd numbers by incrementing it by two. So this, and then you just hit apply and you're done. So this just batch renames all your files. Very convenient. You can get it from just the uh, Microsoft store. It's entirely free. It is from Microsoft, so you can trust it. And there's a lot of really cool uh, features like there. For example, this, I just hit Windows Shift C and I have a color picker. So I can just hover over my screen anywhere and I can see the color it is. There's the hacks number, and if I click, I get this nifty little window that pops up. Now here's my hex number, here's my RGB values, the HSL, and I can just copy them. And here's the value, as well as some alternatives next to it. There's a previous one that I got, so if I close this and do another one. So if I come here and I, let's say, sample this blue, right, here's the previous few. So, and then I quickly can go in and just copy these values as I need to. So it's very convenient. So I highly recommend uh, Power Tools for those of you do, that don't know about it or have never used it. You can do renames, color swatches, dimensions, lots of really fun and cool stuff. But once you have this, what I, I have also picked up another program, and this one's really cheap, 
and I'm sure there's alternatives to it that are potentially free. I picked it up right now for 50% off. I don't know if the sale is still going on at the time of this recording, but if not, it's $20 normally as a program called Aceprite. It's pronounced Aceprite, but it's like Aceprite. Don't get confused by how it's actually pronounced in terms of how it's spelt. That threw me off originally. But what it allows me to do is just get my entire image sequence right here, as you can see. Areas running in all the directions. It's all together. And this is why I rename everything to be from one to the final number of all of them. By having them all here, I can specify each section by frames. And then when I try to export it, I can specify to take the sprite sheet and I can split it by the tags that I've generated. And this gives me a sprite sheet of every single animation. And I can output both the, the file it is and the JSON data. And this JSON data, Unreal can read. And it allows us to just automatically just drag this JSON file into Unreal and it'll populate all of our sprites for us. Before we continue on, I would love to give a big thank you to my Patreons. You guys are awesome and you help support what I do. I'm actually thinking of adding another tier specifically for game dev where I can show you guys my prototypes and the games where you can first do early testing on them and any money I can get from that tier would go directly into funding whatever game I'm currently making. That's, that's the idea, but I would love to get your feedback on that if that's something that you think would be interesting to you. But with that, thank you again to the Patreons. Let's get back to it. So on Unreal, this is the JSON file that was brought in and it brought in all the textures. Here's the original texture and it automatically creates this frames folder with all of the sprites. I intentionally set it up where my character is always in the center of the frame and his feet are always on the ground bottom pixel. So that way I can go in here and I can immediately just go select them all and I can just edit selection and I can just on the sprites, I can just set them all to be bottom center pivot and then I'm good. I am set. The only thing I need to make sure is I've zoomed out the camera for the resolution I'm doing where this pixel aspect is consistent. So if I was to have this character with a long sword and let's say he moved his arms to the right and the sword is another 10 feet out and it's out of frame, well, I need to move the camera further back and get more of the space so it doesn't get cut off, right? And by doing this, you now need to adjust your potentially your pixel aspect ratio since you're converting again 3D to pixels. You need to might render at a higher resolution, adjust the pixel uh, sizes in Unreal. You'll figure it out and it's a per character thing, or you can do a kind of a larger scale version that is fits for every single character. It's entirely gonna be depending on what you want. Once you're in here, go into your sprite sheet, right click and create flipbooks, and it creates all of these flipbooks for you. So as you can see, there's our flipbooks. This is the idle ones, and it populates all of these, everything for you. You don't need to do anything manually. And this is why I just like a sprite for this. Now I'm sure again, others can do the same thing. The convenience for me was worth it. And so then I can take this and combine it with Paper ZD, which is another plugin for Unreal for 2D sprites. We can get the directional animations that we're using. So that's how we're able to use these then. Take these 3D models and convert them into 2D sprites and then use them in Unreal and get a really cool effect. Now, he is currently not attacking very fast. He's not snappy enough. My attacks, as you can see, are a little bit snappier. Of course, as you see, we don't have all the animations I'd want. We'd probably want a different animation when he's in the air versus when he's on the ground. Already, it's a bit snappier, and that's kind of the whole point. I want this combat to feel quick and snappy. I feel like there's like a heft to the weapons, but not feel like, okay, let me just run to the enemy. And that's kind of, if you played my demo from the previous video on this, that's kind of what it felt like. I got to have to sluggishly go to the enemies. This is like, you want to do quick, 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 kind of make you feel like, okay, I'm progressing, I'm progressing. I'm not like, I don't want to slow down. So that's kind of the idea behind it. And that's what I've been working on uh, since then. Again, anything that I have shown you guys today, if you have questions on how to do it, how to set it up, uh, of a step-by-step -step tutorial on any of this. I'll be more than happy to show you guys. But if you guys haven't checked out the previous actual game demo of this, well, check out this video right here where I go ahead and show you the game and a link down in the description for where to download it.